Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, we're doing magic from Hack the Box. So let's not waste any time, let's hop on over to my screen here. And I have a folder set up for our magic box and I'm gonna go ahead and make an nmap directory so we can begin as we always do with a simple nmap scan to find open ports and see what we could work with on this box. So I'll use nmap with the syntax tacsc for default scripts, tacsv to enumerate versions, tacon to output in an nmap format. I'll save it in that nmap directory that I created and call that file initial. And we'll have the IP address of the box, which is 10.10.10.185. So while that's running, I will go ahead and do some fingerprinting on my own. But before I actually run that, let me kickstart that with verbose mode on so I can see ports that it finds uh, while it's working. And I see SSH on port 22 and port 80 seemingly on with HTTP as a web server. That already finished up, so let's go ahead and check out that nmap scan. That's in that nmap directory, and we have all the output that I see here. Let me close out some of these sublime text windows, and we've got all the information that we asked for. Let me actually kickstart an all port scan, just for some good practice while we're doing that. Uh, I'll turn off those scripts, and I'll just output that to all ports. But it looks like this is all we have to work with right now, SSH on port 22 and HTTP on port 80. So we can poke at that web server since we don't exactly know any credentials to SSH into. So I'll fire up Firefox. There we go. And I'll go to 10.10.10.185. Okay, this is the web page for magic and seemingly it just shows a lot of images or GIFs. That's very nice. Uh, that are all about magic and magic tricks. My first inclination is like, okay, is this going to end up being like an exploit with image magic or something? I know there are some gimmicks where you can get some peculiar files that will run code. But taking a look at the source code of the web page, I just hit control U on my keyboard to see what we have to work with. I'm looking through to see if there's any oddball files. I like to take a look at the CSS files and the JavaScript files that are static and included to the web page because maybe there might be some interesting information or they just might try to hide some things. I do see a login.php, so we'll definitely have to check that out. Um, all of these JavaScript files that I'm looking at seem to be either external, not external, uh, but maybe a custom library or language that's kind of put together already, maybe an open source tool. So nothing specific to this application seemingly. Uh, all of these are either a previous licensed software or someone that's something that someone else wrote, not the original box here. So that's nothing that I'm extremely interested in that I had found. But scrolling through to get an idea for what all these file names are, um, it's odd that they're kind of represented by what looks like the start of a hash. And I just kind of want to get an idea on all of these because while there might be some folders that I see with images slash full, we could check out to see if there's anything else in that directory. If I go to 10, 10, 10, 185 slash images, but it's not going to give me a directory listing. That is kind of forbidden for me. But I do see some peculiar file folders, uploads, and I wonder if we could upload something. So because we're working off of port 80 and we have some that we could seemingly use, looks like that nmap scan finished with all ports. So that was quick and easy. I will run Nikto and tee that to a Nikto log. I'll also go ahead and start off Durbuster. So I will take that URL and specify the word list of my directory word list medium that comes with Durbuster and that can get started. It'll immediately find that images and assets as we were looking at just kind of through our manual poking. I wonder if there'll be anything else that it particularly finds and we can obviously supply an extension here. Oh, I do see a cookie set for a PHP session ID. Nikto triggered on that. So let's actually take a look at this login page. Please log in to upload images. And I have a seemingly username and password prompt. Again, I'm going to take a look at the, sor the source code and in case there's any like JavaScript or client side code that's actually handling this. But I don't see anything extra linked as compared to kind of what we already saw earlier. This hash looks interesting because it's not so much actually a hash, but it's actually just a little hex. I can take a look at what that is. If I just pipe it into XXD minus R minus P. That's kind of a quick command line technique to be able to decode or like unhexlify. And it looks like it just gives me magic. So that's not particularly useful. 
Uh, I wonder if all some of those other hashes, hash-like looking things, had that info. Okay. But there's nothing interesting here in the source code. So we could start to try classic, stupid, maybe simple username and password combinations like admin or password or admin or admin or root or tor or root, etc., etc. I'm repeatedly getting this wrong username or password notification though. So that doesn't seem to be the right route. Um, something that you could do because after I spent a lot of this time enumerating, I didn't end up finding anything else that could potentially give me a username and password. Um, obviously, there's nothing on SSH. Durbuster didn't end up finding anything else. Uh, if I were to end up running it with some extensions, like slash PHP or a dot PHP, it will find index, login, and upload dot PHP and logout dot PHP, but those are going to give me 302 or redirects because I am not logged in yet. So... Without a whole lot else left to try, you could just kind of go for your immediate, maybe knee-jerk reaction of SQL injection. So I will do an or one equals one, and also an or one equals one there. That also gets a wrong password. Uh, note that I tried that with a double quote to terminate the inner string that SQL might be using. That might be what it's using. And I also used two hyphens or dashes to indicate like a more of a SQLite style and syntax comment that again might be what it's using. We're just kind of guessing and trying it. We could change that up to just use the hashtag or pound symbol or octothorpe. Um, that might get us somewhere, but no, that didn't either. You could again have some room to change that where you use a single quote rather than a double quote. See if that will work for us. And that seemed to work. Okay, so super duper simple, quick SQL injection technique. Uh, that or one equals one will just return uh, maybe a, an individual true statement. So maybe it was trying to select uh, from the database username where password is equal to something, but we've injected that or one equals one. So the or means kind of a, a optional condition, true in this case. And because or means only one of the two conditions or one of the many conditions that you use with or will be true, all of those will evaluate to true because that or means this or that, right? And simple stuff, now we are greeted with a image to upload page and functionality. Mm. So whenever you see this, it's normally a great thing to just try to upload like a PHP reverse shell, especially because we know this is running PHP. I can see that .php extension in just about everything that we've seen thus far. So we could get started with a little script here. I will go ahead and copy my opt reverse shell or PHP reverse shell into this directory. I'll just call it rev shell.php. So now I have a rev shell.php. I will take a look at my IP address and modify that PHP reverse shell to include that. Uh, if you don't have that, obviously that might not already be in your op file and your op folder. Go just simply search for PHP reverse shell and pen test monkey has a really good one. I don't know why my uh, user agent is set to a mobile device right now. It's because I was trying to do quick on Hack the Box. Pentest Monkey PHP Reverse Shell. There we go. Okay, that's it's this link down here. Pen Reverse Shell Cheat Sheet Pentest Monkey. They have the tiny, tiny one that they're showcasing just a single standalone line for PHP. But if you want a whole PHP file to upload, there's a more featureful and robust shell here. And you can download that tar gzip file, extract it, etc. Okay, let's go ahead and work with that. Like I said, we will need to change that IP address to our IP address. And we can specify a port to run on. So I'll use quad four. And we can try to upload this. It says select an image, but we don't know what it's actually going to be doing to test or verify or check if it is an image. So it might always be a good thing to try and use a PHP script just to see, just to poke. Upload this and it says, sorry, only JPEG, JPEG and PNG files are allowed. Okay, that's annoying. Um, so it is going to probably test for an image somehow. Let me try to actually copy that to revshell.png if it's only working revshell.png. 
and you did the source and destination in that syntax. Maybe it's just testing that this is a file based off of the file extension. So it's worth just throwing another one up there with just a different file extension. <laughs> and I get the response, what are you trying to do here? So it can tell that I'm doing some malicious and uh, maybe not so safe stuff. Who knows? Okay. Normally, when we're trying to do a image upload and a little bypass to get code execution with PHP, but it's supposed to be an an image file. What you could do is make a uh, PHP script wrapped in a GIF file. Excuse me. Sorry, there were some typos there. Because GIF is pretty easy where the first bytes and header of what your file might be is pretty plain text and easy to write. You can just kind of knock that out. Um, and then you could simply like, okay, get your PHP code in here and tr try and see if you were to rename this to like a PHP uh, a file extension if the web server were to interpret it, but it would be able to pass through their uploader just fine because according to file, when you're looking at this revshell.gif, it's going to think that it's a GIF. That's that magic number or the file signature and the header that's present at the very, very start of the file. Obviously, it's not a real GIF because the dimensions it's trying to read are really, really muffed up. It's obviously, okay, pre-planted with some PHP code. Interesting. That's easy to do with GIF because you can just simply write those. Uh, but take note of what I said there. You're specifying the magic number for this file. And this box is simply called magic. So that's that might be the right idea. But if we're only allowed to work with JPEG and PNG files, I figured like, okay, I'm going to need to have to do that in a different way. So I went ahead and just Googled a PNG like specification and a file structure and a Wikipedia was actually fine to just give me the magic number details. All these are bytes here. Because they are bytes, I can't just simply type these in the way that I did with this GIF header. If I were to paste that in, that's that's not really what it is. I need the raw bytes of that, not just like using these numbers. So let me change this up. I'm actually going to go ahead and carve this and create this with Python just so I can simply get those bytes in there. I guess something that we could do, and let me try and kind of shoot from the hip here, forgive me, but if I were to unhexlify this just kind of as I showed you earlier, we can xxe tech r tech p this, and now we'll have the start of a PNG script, PNG file, and I can bring that to PNG header simply there. And let's also create a simple um, like PHP info dot PHP code. PHP info just as a proof of concept, right? Obviously, we'll want to do something more malicious where we can get code execution. But if I cat out PNG header and PHP info, now I'll have both of those kind of on my centered output stream. And I can redirect that into a new file. I'll call that like uh, info dot PHP or PNG, right? We'll see if this actually is read by file as a PNG file. In this case, it's not. Uh, we could see if the web page will actually handle it though. It's worth a try. I'll go ahead and use that info.png file that I just created and I'll upload that. And that says the file info.png has been uploaded. So okay, that, that bypasses it, that works. Question is, is it gonna actually execute that PHP code? Let me go over to that directory images slash uploads because we saw that previously when we were working through uh, this this file here, this web page, this box. We saw that in the home directory, in the home page. It says the image cannot be displayed because it contains errors. So okay, it's trying to actually read that and interpret it as a PNG file. Question is, how can we get it to actually run as PHP code? So let me make a copy of that with info.php as a file extension. And let's see if that will whine at us. This is where we're just kind of testing and working. Info.php, upload. Nope, looks like it needs that file extension in there. Will it take that at the final end? If I have an info.png.php, does it need just just need to have that file extension in the string, in the file name. We can try that. Upload image. 
That also fails. So this is a wonky idea, but it might just work if you have simply PHP in the name. Will the web page read and interpret it? Info.php.png. We can try that. Let's upload him. PHP.png. Upload. And that uploaded. Okay, so let's see if that actually will invoke the PHP code here. Again, I'll bring us to images, uploads, and you can see some of my history from doing this previously, sorry. <laughs> and okay, we have code execution from PHP. This is a big deal because now we can potentially get remote code execution or use that PHP reverse shell. Um, I did that in a small primitive way. Um, obviously what we could do is because now that we have that PNG header and we have that uh, rev shell page dot PHP, we could just move that into another uh, proper, like big rev shell or whatever the heck you want to call it, php.png, as now we know that is the file extension kind of trick that we need to use to pass and move through their upload form and still execute this PHP code when we go access that page from the web browser. That's a technique we could use. Uh, I actually, because I just did that cat and XXD combo off the fly, I do want to show you um, what else I did when I was originally doing this because I just did it with a stupid Python script. Um, I would take the magic bytes of whatever I was using. So the PNG here, I would go ahead and take this and let me select all those and just replace in that selection every space with a comma. So I can just make a list, I guess, out of that. Or each of those actually needs to be, here's what we'll do. Let's put this on another page. Control H to remove all spaces. And I can just bin ASCII and hexify that. Originally, I did this as a list. So in my head, I'm thinking, let's do that. Uh, space, replace with new lines. Then you can control shift L to get multiple cursors in sublime text and add a zero X in front of these to make those all simple hexadecimal. That would work. Or we could do bin ASCII.hexify and work with this however way we wanted to. You could use this in a pretty custom way because that way you could simply... Um, change and swap this out if you're going to use a, a different file type like if you're going to use a jpeg or some other format you can just say magic can equal those and then because we're working in python 3 let me add that in the shebang line so i'm explicit you can just make this a simple byte array and i can print out magic as that variable here and now we have okay the real bytes that starts that PNG script. So then I would go ahead and open the file that I actually want to work with, like the actual suffix that I need for revshell.php with read and write as h. So I'll use a with little context manager here and I'll do a h.read or just like content. And then I can create a new shell with new shell.php dot PNG, as we know, that is what it should be. So then I can simply write that as H where I can write the magic and the content here. So I'm reading the content in from the actual original file that I just want to put this in as bytes. And since magic is a byte array, that will just return and behave formally for me. So H dot write to throw that in there. If I were to run this, I don't have any errors. You can see that finished just fine. I'll hop on over to my terminal again. I have that new shell.php.png. So that could work for us and we can customize this. So that's two methods to kind of do that. Just a simple Python thing or the cat and XXD from the command line method. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and fire this up. I will get back to this upload here and I will upload this new shell.php.png. There we go. And that told me, or that told the server that I will connect on port quad four, right? Yeah, okay. So let me fire up Pwncat, see if it will behave. That's always kind of a fun thing to tinker with. Thank you, Unity HUD. Get Pwncat environment bin activate, good stuff. And now let's pwncat 
tac lp quad four and i'm actually going to specify a configuration file so i can work with it in the database there we go and he should be listening he is fantastic now let's go trigger this to actually connect images uploads and we called it new shell dot png dot png let's see if that triggers there we go okay we got our connection couldn't find a shell. We're assuming we were in bin sh. That's totally fine. Let me just invoke bash here. And then I'll set my prompt to fancy. So Pwncat kind of handles that nicely. I'm dub 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 data. All right, we got our initial foothold. We are on the box, at least as a low privilege user. So now let's kind of enumerate and do anything else we might want to do. Um, benefit of having Pwncat and just being able to, I don't know, thankfully create other shells and work with things. Let me connect one more time. I'll start up another listener and run this. Uh, that will be my config data pwncat rc. And let's actually fire that off one more time. So one of these I can use to simply run enumeration, tech s tech a, and actually pwncat didn't want to do that because it already has a database open. Fine. I will use simple netcat. There we go. And let's stabilize this. Uh, do we have Python 3 or Python 2? Which Python? That's not a thing. How about Python 3? Python 3 is a thing. So let's stabilize shell 3. Um, what I'm doing there is I'm using my poor man's pen test framework, which is a cheesy, stupid thing to use like XTE or X automation and automatically type in the commands to stabilize your shell. So use Python three to import a PTY, PTY.spawn bin bash, uh, foreground that to go back to your host, set your terminal in raw mode, and then hit uh, FG to foreground the process and export term equal X term to get a regular stable shell here. So Pwncat is going to be doing its own enumeration over there. Um, if we're going to be doing this kind of the original way or as you normally would, we could just upload or download Lin P's or Lin Enum to do some enumeration. But before I dive into all that, I do want to kind of go back to the basics, right? We know that we were working with a web application that had a login functionality and had an upload functionality and had regular users working with it, right? Because you could, you could share an image was the idea and, and you had a cookie that was set when you were logged in. So there must be a sort of database that we're working in. I think it's a really good idea to go take a look at some of those database files and those configuration files because we might find credentials or some information that can help us get into the database. Let me take a look that we actually have some users on this box and someone to actually move into other than this data user that I'm running as. So I can see, counting out etc. password very simply, there is a Theseus user and he has a UID of 1000 and he has a normal bash shell. So that seems to be someone we could interact with and use. And our enumeration, either from LinPs or LinEnum or from Pwncat, might be able to find us a foothold or some technique and thing to use. But let's actually hop on over to this var dub 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 so we can see where the root of the web page and the web server and the website might be. Normally, that's an HTML. There's actually nothing in here this time. Uh, they put it in that magic folder. So let's CD into that and see what we have to work with. We have all of these files that we saw were on the web page, but we also have a db.php5. That might be particularly useful for us. So let's take a look at that PHP5 file. I'll zoom out here and actually I'll throw this into uh, Sublime Text so it has some nice easy reading on the eyes for you. Some syntax highlighting. So we have a database class and it has a database name of magic with the host localhost, username Theseus, database password, I am King Theseus. Okay, awesome. Our intuition was right. Going to check out that database configuration file might tell us a password in simple clear text. Good to do. We could try to simply SU into that user with this password because maybe this is also his system account password and not just the database doesn't work all that well. Looks like we have to kind of go with the initiative and the gut feeling that this is just to interact with the database. Oh, I accidentally deleted that with a tab key. Pwncat's still doing his thing. Kind of cheesy. That's fine. The numeration takes a long time. Uh, we could also take a look at what is running because we didn't actually see that 
MySQL server, that service accessible from the outside. When we ran our Nmap scan, we only found port 22 and port 80. We didn't see M MySQL. And you can see it's only running locally. It's just bind to localhost address 127.0.0.1.3306. So it looks like we have to use this box to get to it unless we want to do some other weird, clever, janky things to kind of port forward. But that might take other tricks that we don't really have to deal with because maybe we could just use a MySQL client on this machine. But we don't have a MySQL client on this machine. So <laughs> that was kind of a wrench in the works when I was uh, taking a look through here. I, I thought like, okay, there's got to be something. There's got to be, obviously, there's a MySQL daemon and a MySQL service running. Uh, there has to be something that we could interact with to see this database. Yeah, we could like pillage through the files if you really wanted to. Um, but I wanted to actually log in and see the things that Theseus could see because we had his password. So I just tried to type MySQL and then I hit my tab autocomplete like a ton of times to kind of get a suggestion as to what I could really use to maybe uh, get some more information or work with this MySQL database. So I originally just found this like MySQL uh, what do they have? Show? Yeah, I, I worked with MySQL Show for a second. It's like, oh, you got to supply a username and credentials. It's, you can't log in as dub 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 data. I'm like, oh, okay, this is perfect because we know Theseus and his password. And if I use tac p to specify a password and then leave that empty, it'll prompt me for it. So I can hit that there, paste that in, and now I have some information. These are the databases that we have, but that's not really all that I want. <laughs> I'd like more than that. Uh, you could probably, I don't know, MySQL show admittedly off the top of my head. So maybe you could pull other actual information out of there or it's just table and column information, maybe not actual data. So that's not extremely helpful. I went back to my commands that I could run with MySQL and I found one here, MySQL dump. I figured that might be worth a try. Oh, we could dump a database. And since we know the databases, we have this magic one we could work with. But we do need to actually specify our login, right? Access denied for user dub 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 data once more. So let me specify user Theseus. I'll use our password, slap that in. And now we have a ton of stuff that just falls out. So this is the database dump here. Cool. So we got that without having to have to use a MSQL or MySQL client and interact with it manually. Totally fine. In this information, we do see dumping data for the table login. And I can see insert into login values admin and Theseus was king in some kind of leet speak. Cool. Okay. That is probably another password. In fact, that's probably one for Theseus's system account. So let's SU or switch user into Theseus, slap that in. And now I am the Theseus user. Incredible. Amazing. Pwncat still doing his thing. Uh, let me see if I can just actually fire up another Pwncat session, because now that we're doing some big stuff, we're in as a real user, hopefully we have something worthwhile. This box doesn't have netcat. Fantastic. Never mind. My poor man's pen test thing won't do it. I think I could just do the simple uh, bash technique. Or I could just stop this enumeration. Let's SU to Theseus. We have his password here. Now let's set the prompt to fancy one more time. There we go. Pwncat's ready. And we're cruising. Um, we didn't run linpeas earlier, and we should now. Especially now that we're as a user, we do have a user.txt, so you could take a look at that guy and grab that, pull that out if you want. But he's the only one that we saw on this box, right? Our enum could work and continue from Pwncat. We could run specific enum modules or kind of things that we need to do with that. Or we could just throw in linpeas. So let me actually upload op linpeas. Upload that. Cool. Taking your time. You say you're at 100%, buddy. <laughs> this is the best thing when I like show Pwncat on a video and then it just does all the weird things. <laughs> okay. Okay. Never mind. We're just going to go back to our bare bones shell. If that's even still a thing. Nope. All right, cool. That guy, that died too. Is the box just gone? Nah, he's fine.
Oh, our files might have been destroyed because it took a little bit of time. Let's get back to our upload. Thank you, demo gods. Mm, and now it's not letting me enter spaces. So originally I saw this when I was first going through the box and it didn't let me enter these spaces. Uh, I got around this because I don't want to do it through curl. I originally had just done this. Oh, let me reset that terminal because he's muffed up now. CD, CTF, HTM, excuse me, whoa, HTB. <laughs> and I'm in YouTube quick, uh, web login. Py. I had just kind of ran through this with a Python script because trying to send that request in curl is very annoying. You could probably just do this with the, your development tools. If I were to send like a username and password, once we see that post request go through, you should be able to like right click to like edit and resend this. Edit and resend and username, I will use that or one equals one, including spaces. Slap that in as well. I'll send him. And did that actually respond? No, okay, so even that is funky. I don't like having to use the comment Octothorpe thing in curl or doing URL things. So I just like to do it in Python because I know that will work. So I will do an import requests and I'll do a request.session and then I will close that session just for good practice at the end. And But I'll do an s.post to that URL with data specified and I'll use a username, as we know that is the name of that entry in the form with, it was a single quote? Oh, it was a single quote. Oh, I might've done that wrong. Maybe that didn't work in the web page because I mistyped it. Let's do the same thing for password. And let's actually save this as a thing. And let's print that out. That should, if I just kind of ran through that just fine, tell me that we are logged in. Yep, okay, I, have, I see a logout page, so I know that I'm there. Let me actually just print that cookie. Uh, S.cookies, and now I have that session ID. So I could throw that in. Um, if I do a, and from the console here, if I specify document.cookie set to PHP session ID can equal that guy. Now, if I refresh, it should let me go to upload straight there. Yep. Okay. Totally fine. So let's upload that new shell one more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I didn't upload anything. New shell go. And let's fire that up. Let's get to images, uploads, new shell. That triggers, that gets me back. There's my shell. I can SU to Theseus. And I totally originally once at one point had his password and now that's probably gone. Grr. This is why you should take your notes, guys. That's okay. Let me get it from my uh, original notes. Spoilers. 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 Take notes. Okay. Now that we're in, does that even have a connection? Or is that just dying? Box is not wanting to behave. Let's just use a regular shell. What is going on? They do not want me to be doing this right now, apparently. There's our shell. We'll just do this the lazy way. Are we still in there? Fucking what? <laughs> SU Theseus. Okay. Prompt, tech tech fancy. Great. That that one's ruined down there. Did I actually upload Linpeas earlier? Probably not. Do I have write access in the stinking directory? I do. <laughs> All right, let's just do it. 
through wget. Um, the way we could download it with wget is to simply copy our linps into this directory and then do a little Python HTTP server. And what is my IP address real quick? I am 14.4. So let's curl or wget, excuse me, HTTP. 10, 10, 14, 4, quad 8,000, linps.sh. And now it's here in that home directory. We could probably put it in a smarter place like dev, shm, or temp, but we'll just fire this off and do our regular enumeration after fumbling to uh, get our box back. But, okay. We could run other things like hey sudo tac l to do our manual enumeration. We could find to look for set UID binaries on our own. We could look for other misconfigurations or maybe look more into his home directory as to other stuff that might be there that might either give us other passwords or might have a script like a, a configuration or maintenance script that will run with cron and that might be a privilege escalation foothold. Those are all options, but I think it's always worthwhile to just fire up little linpeas or linenum. I don't see anything sticking out in cron. Linpeas is great because it'll color code all the stuff that we're working with and the things that might very, very likely be a potential privilege escalation vector. It found my SQL, right? users with console. So Theseus and root are really the only ones to particularly work with. Da, 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 da. Possible private keys were found. What in the mime, in the data for image magic? I, I guess I can look at that. Maybe. I don't think we'll need to. I actually saw that. Okay, I'll, I'll remove the illusion. I looked at that earlier when I did this the first time. And it did. There's weird like starts of it. Readable files belonging to root and readable by me but not world readable? What is this? Bin sysinfo? What? Root? It's owned by root. Use oh, and it's a set UID binary too. It's got a lot that S bit set. That's a weird one. Let's is that a thing? Is that like on my I've never heard of a bin sysinfo. Do I have a sysinfo command on my machine? No. No. <laughs> Okay, definitely weird one. Let's go take a look at that. Uh, not a whole lot else to look through here. So which sysinfo? It's been sysinfo. It's in my path. Bin sysinfo. It just ran hardware checks and things. That was weird. That was interesting. It, it, is that... We already looked at this. Yeah, it is a set UID binary. That's stinking weird. Okay, so if it's ran by root, owned by root, and we'll set that permission, if I run a little ltrace on bin sysinfo, do we have ltrace? Does that work? Okay, yeah, so I can see some of the functions that it's calling or what it's trying to do because it seems to be a binary. And if you wanted to, you could check that one more time. It, that's not like, you can't have a set UID bit set for a script. So I assume that was a binary. Ltrace. Going to the very, very start of this, there's a lot, sorry. Maybe I'm scrolling through too much. Maybe I'm in the like, first iteration of it. There's just, how much is this thrown out here? Bin sysinfo, yeah, this is when I ran it. I want the ltrace info. There we go, ltrace, set uid zero and set gid zero. Okay, cool. We could potentially be root and popin. For P open to open a process, LSHW. That's a thing we can absolutely abuse because it's just going to run this command without any absolute path. So now let's make a new directory for us. Let's create a simple shell, or no, it's called LSHW, right? And this can be a simple bash script and we can just run bash tac P. Tac P to keep the set UID info. And let's mark it as executable, LSH. If I were to run that, yep, just spawns bash for me. Okay, punk cat, that's fine. Um, let's add that into our prompt. Let's export path, excuse me, uh, add that into our path. Let's 
Add home Theseus new or the current director that you're working in and the colon to separate because that's the delimiter for path. Uh, the old path. So now if I were to type in LSHW, that will just run that shell. So let's exit out of that. And if I were to run sysinfo, that should start by running the set UID zero to elevate meter root. And then it will just simply run bash in an interactive way and will be root. <laughs> cool. Okay, that's that. Then we can hop on over to our root directory. What? What is... Oh, we don't have any output. ID, who am I? Okay. So I found this and thought it was odd. Uh, that's probably just the way that I had ended up running it with the bash tag P while it's in the middle of doing something else. And maybe I guess it, it didn't keep whatever interactive form. Bash tag I, I also kind of experimented with that. Like if I exit this, uh, let me nano that LSA check. I'll make this guy here. And you could probably, maybe it needs like an exec or some other redirection to TTY, some other like Lin stuff, but I never ended up getting output from that very easily. So because I just had my root privileges, I used my kind of favorite trick to make bash set UID so that no matter who I was, I would be able to just simply run bin bash tag P and then have my full root privileges. Now I have that. So now I can get back to root and actually see information. So this was kind of cool. Uh, let me sync this because there's not a lot of screen space apparently right now. There we go. Cat info. It's still not taking it. Whatever. We'll just take a look. This seems to be the C source code and the actual file that was put together, like the the, the binary source. This is the source code behind that sysinfo program seemingly because it, you can see it running all these hardware commands or LSH, W, F disk, et cetera, et cetera. So we could have latched on to some others, but I always like to go for the first one in case the others like have some weird dependency or whatever further down the, in the code. But we have root.txt. You can read that out and grab that and you are root. Did I say that? You do have root.txt. I didn't, did I say read.txt? <laughs> I always get so bad, especially at these long videos. And this really didn't have to be long. This was another kind of seemingly classic and simple uh, Linux box. There were some good pieces here. But hey, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I know a lot of people have been saying, John, you got to do some hack the box. So uh, please forgive me that I am trying to get back to it. I do have a hack the box folder that I'm trying to get some machines and do more with it because I know people are hating me on me like, John, you do, uh, you're such leaning towards try hacking. It's like, Hey man, it's a John Hammond channel. We kind of do whatever John Hammond wants to put out there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot to it and longer than it probably needed to be, but we were wrestling with the machine for a little bit. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment, YouTube algorithm things. Hopefully subscribe. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.